Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond, and if you're new to this series, we built this five acre pond over the past year, and it took us several months to get all of the dirt excavated, and we had to bring in several truckloads of clay, and we also built an island, a dock, and got all the structure in place, and then it took a couple of months to get it full of water. After that, we stocked it with a bunch of bait fish, including bluegills and threadfin shad, and not long after that, we stocked it with these little two inch aggressive bass. And we're going to be giving you an update on them here in just a minute and showing you how big they've gotten. But first, I'm excited to show you guys a project we've been working on for months now. Our underwater fish tracking system. We're going to be installing antennas, sending data back to the control panel and data loggers, and even watching it happen real time on a graph. So the concept of this idea originated over a year ago when we started tagging all the bass in the pond. So each time we'd catch a fish, we'd inject a pit tag which is a unique 12 digit number, and then we would assign that fish a name. We even tagged our two pet bass, Bonnie and Clyde, that we raised for seven years. So now we've got dozens of tagged fish, including our pets, and I wanted to be able to interact with these fish and collect data without having to catch them every time. So our plan is to put underwater antennas at each of the main structure points throughout the pond. And if you guys recall that incredible table build Nate did for us, it gives us a perfect detailed look at a lot of those structure points we're going to be targeting. We've got the Oak Throne, Alcatraz Island, the Feed Trough, the Dugout, and even the green lights right here at the dock. But we've been working with a company called UID, and they've got a ton of knowledge and background on building systems to track animals across the country. So we're going to start off by installing two of these antennas and wiring them back to the control panel that we're going to mount right here on the fish feeder. So let's jump right into it. All right, so step number one, we need a qualified electrician to connect the AC. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> And you know we had to bring in Nate Makes. He's been with us since the beginning of the pond build and has engineered some incredible products, including the table I showed you, as well as the duck house. So he's a perfect fit for this project. So the next step will be routing the conduit into the bottom of the panel. And we're going to separate our antenna cables from the power source, which will be landing right up here. All right, we're going to get the antenna cable ran in this flex pipe but it's key not to allow water to get down there in that cable connection. So Nate's gonna silicone it. We're gonna let that dry and then add that flex. All right, so we're having trouble getting our antenna cable routed through the flex, but our buddy Stanley gave us a good tip. Hook up some paracord with a bag on the end and a vacuum on the other end suction it right through there we go and then you just tie your antenna cable right there and pull it back through all right so we're going to do a little live test on land we got a temporary power connection there in the top right 120 volts got the two antennas hooked up we're going to take a pit tag and run it through these to test them make sure that it works all right got everything hooked up Sounds good, we got lights. Green lights over here. Everything's checking out. We'll add some USB storage right there in the data collectors. All right, we got one of our pit tags here. Let's go ahead and scan it. That's 9887. Now we're gonna pretend that a fish passed through the antenna. Same thing with this one. All right, we just checked it. We got live data on the USB, so we're ready to permanently install them out here. What we're gonna do is just tie some bricks down to the bottom and use a float up to the top, so that way it'll stand up and float out there and the fish can swim in and out of them. The fish doesn't necessarily have to swim through the square. It can also just get around the edges. You can see where the antenna's built in right there. All right, on a scale of one to 10, how cold is 55 degrees? <laughs> I'm gonna go eight, I'm gonna go eight, it's pretty cold. <laughs> eight out of 10, he didn't know he was coming out here to do a polar plunge. <laughs> We're almost there. We got the bricks attached with enough slack in there to float. Got the float attached. So here's a live look from inside the Crimson Oak Pond. Here's where we wired our pipes up. The water is freezing cold, but we're gonna come in here and here with our two antennas and then wire that directly into the box. You can also see the live scope pole we have 
we'll be talking more about that here in just a little bit but we're about to drop these antennas off I'm gonna put one right over here by the green lights because I know a lot of fish hang out there at night and then one out here by the oak throne so that's pretty wild the feeder went off while I'm down here in the water these fish are actually sitting here eating right out in front of me It's a different view of them for sure. Boy, you had a rainbow trout. Mm -hmm. All right, we got everything piped in. Antennas ran through the flex. So the last thing we have to do is move the antennas out to their location. And what we're doing is we routed it through some blocks there so that as we put that in, that flex will stay on the bottom and not get in the way of any fishermen in the future. But that's pretty much what the rig looks like. And I like how it has the float because that makes it adjustable so we can move it around out there, put it out deeper if we want to. And check out all the fish swimming around us right here while we're installing that antenna. All right, we got the antennas installed. I was gonna put one closer to the oak throne, but once we saw all that fish feeding activity when we were in the water right there, I decided to put it halfway out there. And you can already see the fish swimming right there through the antennas. So all those white dots are individual fish. Like some of these smaller ones are probably bluegills, but that's a bass right there swimming, and he's about to swim right at the base of that antenna. So we should start collecting data there's one thing for sure right here at night when the green light comes on it's gonna be easy to spot them <laughs> so I'm probably the first person to ever mount a live scope to a dock but I'll have to admit this company summit made it a lot easier because they have basically built a portable setup that allows you to deploy this technology anywhere but the reason we're getting it installed out here today is because I want to watch those fish interact around these antennas and it'll help us set them up because anytime you're dealing with antennas, you have to fine tune that signal strength. And our goal today is to tune the antennas, but we also wanna see how far away from it, it'll still track them. And that's gonna help us whenever we install them at other pieces of structure in the pond. But I have to admit, there was a really big added benefit of adding this live scope to the dock that I wasn't expecting. So if you've watched over the past year, we do all of our fish feeding at night because the underwater green lights allow us to see where those fish are at and we can toss the bait into them. Well, now that we have this new technology, I wanted to try some daytime feedings, and it's really cool because I can look right here on the graph and see where the fish are in relation to the dock. And I noticed there was a nice school of them over here to the left, right out in front of the dock. So I started dropping some golden shiners in, and we created a fish feeding frenzy. And if you missed the last video, our biggest pet bass, Bonnie, came up during a nighttime feeding. And so now if that happens again in the future, these new antennas will scan or tag, and it's just an extra confirmation that it's her. And I'd love to start hand feeding them again like we used to in the backyard pond. And check out those really big beds out there. Those are way too big to be bluegill beds. So my best guess is those are tilapia beds. You can even see the cinder block we added earlier and the fish swimming right over it. So the one thing I've learned in just a few minutes is the bass control this area right here out in front of the dock all the trout and bluegills are staged out there in that deeper water just waiting on the feeders to go off as you can see all these bigger fish right here these big white blobs are bass swimming right here in this area and all those little slender specks out there are going to be the trout and the feeder is going to go off here in a minute and i have a feeling we're going to see all that stuff from out there shoot up here So now that we got the data rolling in, let's check it out. So the next part of this project is developing software to read the pit tag, identify the fish's name, and the goal is gonna to be to display that on an overhead map of the pond so you can see the exact location or structure piece the fish is swimming at. And we wanna make this data live 
so that any of you can get online and see where the fish are hanging out in the pond. And for an example, you may see that there's six fish swimming at the Oak Throne on a Tuesday at 8 a.m. Now today we're gonna to be working with a product called Sunday to help improve the lawn around our backyard pond as well as out at the farm. Now our backyard is in pretty good shape overall, but we have a couple of trouble areas. You can see here we've got some dead grass and also a few spots with weeds. So the first thing I like about Sunday is their product selection. Not only do they have the lawn fertilizers, but they also carry bug repellents and even seeds for those dead spots. All right, so let's get started with the first treatment. Seems very simple to use. Now hooking it up to the water hose. So the good thing about my yard is everything slopes down from the pond. So I can apply this right here and we don't have to worry about anything running off into the pond because even though you can't see it really good, we got a really good slope. There we go. It's got pretty good range on it. Sunday works as a subscription service and you start out by using the tools they give you to take a soil sample of the backyard. And you send that off to their experts and based on your soil and climate, they'll send you back the exact mix of fertilizer you need to keep your yard looking great throughout the year. So Sunday takes all the guesswork out of it and make it extremely easy to use with these pouches that attach to your water hose. So do me a favor, folks, and head over to GetSunday.com slash Bama Bass and get 20% off a full year of customized lawn plans. But now let's check in on some of the other projects. And if you missed our last video, we introduced a new strain of bass that were 95% Florida strain. And we're going to slowly start adding them in to improve our genetics for the future generations of bass in this pond. But me and Liz named the first two, and I asked you all to name the rest. So the final four were Hurricane, Everglade, Walt, and Okeechobee. So you guys have now been entered into the fishing contest. So I've been seeing something very strange at the pond, and I noticed that as I walked along the banks, I was seeing these little two-inch bass everywhere, and I initially thought, no way that those are largemouth, so I set up a GoPro underwater, and sure enough, there's two-inch bass swimming around everywhere, which means we had to have had a second spawn last year late in the fall. So after a bass gets out of the fry stage, they typically start growing about one inch a month, which means the bass may have spawned around last November. So I'm gonna to talk to the biologist about this and I'll keep you guys posted. I was just setting up a camera right there. I noticed a bluegill in here that got knocked up on the mat. I think he's still alive. Yep. <laughs> he was running from the bass. I guess a little bass chased him up there. He was just taking a break. So now let's check in on some wildlife activity. Got the two eagles up there in their tower and some geese flying in. There's never a lack of wildlife activity out here at the pond. But the two newest members that are becoming permanent residents are the bald eagles. And I love watching them hunt. They've basically got the timing on the fish feeders dialed in. They get three easy meals a day because every time the feeders go off, they swoop down, grab either a bluegill or a rainbow trout, and bring it right back up here to the tower. And that brings me to another point. We've named every animal out here at the pond, so we have to name the two bald eagles. We've also got some juveniles that show up sometimes, but let's go ahead and name the two adults. So leave me a name down in the comments below, and if I select yours, I'll send you out a prize package. But the accuracy on these guys is definitely improving. Check out this eagle swoop down and snag this small fish, which I think is either one of those two inch large mouths or possibly a threadfin shad. And it still holds true that adult eagles do not like sharing. <laughs> but this eagle's gonna add enjoys long walks on the beach at Cedar Falls to its profile. And the whistling ducks have showed back up. About a dozen of those hatched here at the pond last year. And hopefully that's some of them returning. And so far, everybody's been getting along. We got big flocks of geese that'll come through. And the eagles don't seem to mind them. I thought we may have some turf wars. And here's a good shot of the little kingfisher. Taking a bath. And last week, we added four baby turtles to Cedar Falls, and I stopped by to check on them from time to time. They all seem to be doing good, and are still hanging around, but they're a little bit shy. And I asked you to help us name them, and the overwhelming response was that since it was four turtles, we had to name them the Ninja Turtles. So, this will be the second time around of having baby Ninja Turtles. 
but it's that time of year again to start fertilizing the pond. And if you're a pond owner, I highly recommend you doing this every spring. It's free to do, and you just grab a sample of water out of your pond, and you can take it up to your local pool store, and they'll give you a printout. But the key number we want to look at is the total alkalinity. So in order for the fertilizer to actually work in a pond, your alkalinity needs to be over 20 parts per million. And if it's not, you'll have to add lime to bring those numbers up. But in my case, we're good to go. All right, now we're gonna catch a few bass and scan them to see if they've been tagged. If they hadn't, we'll use this to insert a new pit tag in them. But the main thing we're doing out here is trying to get some weights on them to see how good they're growing. And it should be pre-spawn conditions out here, so it's tough to beat a chatterbait. All right, we're gonna see how good this technology works. I'm going to try to catch that one right out in front of the dock, 20 feet out. Got him. <laughs> That's almost too easy. Fish don't have any secrets anymore. <laughs> I mean, I pinpointed him right there. I saw exactly where she was laying at, but this one's got a big belly. Let's see if it's been tagged. Yep, 570601. And she weighs 2.27 pounds. That's a nice one. And this fish is named Quasimodo and is a frog eater and it's the third time we've caught it and it's had some good weight gains all right i'm not going to catch any more of these right here they're kind of like my pets the ones that hang out right here around the dock but nate wanted to get out in the boat let's see if he can catch a couple you see we got a big group of thread fins right there so the nice thing about that summit portable rig is you can put it either over there on the dock where we got it mounted there or you can put something right off the front of the boat that's perspective mode or you can swap it over to live mode but having that portable setup is really nice. It's right in front of the fish. You got two or three right there. Mm. There you go. They're getting close to the boat. They're right in front of the boat. I got one coming up. He ran. Yeah, they both ran away. Right there. Mm -hmm. Is that bait? Yeah. And there's a really cool shot of Terry's tunnels. That big stack of tunnels we built before filling the pond up. And here's a good shot of the diffuser. You can see all those bubbles coming up through that water column. Yep, there goes your bait right on top of it, right there. It's one down there at the bottom. Yeah. Got him. First live scope. <laughs> and it's over him. <laughs> First live scope fish. All right, Nate hooked up. And got a runner. Little guy. All right, this fish has been caught. One, 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 one. All right, and this one weighs 1 1.67 pounds. We got another one. That's a good one. All right, this fish has not been caught. All right, this fish is gonna be a 57193. 1.76 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so you should have been able to see a fight. Yeah, there's the fish right mm -hmm. there. All right, this fish is 9984. <laughs> I thought I recognized that number. <laughs> and this fish is named the Pond Guy. So if you recall, Greg from Aquascape caught a bass back during our last pond build and named it the Pond Guy. Pond Guy. So as I mentioned earlier, the eagles have dialed in on the feeders. And here's a good close-up shot of one trying to catch breakfast. But they're not the only hungry ones. The bass are chasing those bluegills around too. So the wildlife are starting to get more comfortable around the new pond build. This is the first time we've seen deer out there on the beach area. And it's been a while since we've seen a coyote, but they're making their rounds again. And I'm gonna need some help figuring out what this is. My guess is a raccoon that lost its tail, <laughs> but I don't know. 
What do you guys think? And for an update, we've still got the snails hanging around in the shallow areas of the pond. We're going to be adding shell crackers later this spring to help keep that population under control. And it's mating season for the frogs, but I would hop the other way, little guy. You're probably not going to last too long in the water. So one of my personal goals is to dedicate at least one day every year to planting trees. Last year we planted about 2,000 longleaf pines. This year we're going to be planting more cypress and oak trees right here around the pond. But the biggest improvement I made during the off season is I ran irrigation to every tree out here on the property. Because in the past we lost a couple of trees to summer droughts and we're going to try not to let that happen again. You can see we're starting to get quite the collection of oaks which the deer are going to love. And we've also got this cypress starting to bud out. But I had something I wanted to ask you all about. A couple of our trees have this mossy looking growth on them that may be considered a lichen, but I don't know if that's a good or a bad sign for the tree. The trees seem to be healthy and in good shape, but maybe one of you tree experts can give me some info on that. So we got the hole dug for one of our 45 gallon trees. And last year we had success with putting a little bit of that black cow fertilizer in the hole before we put the tree in. And speaking of fertilizer, we do like to fertilize the new trees we plant. But for most trees, you need a controlled released fertilizer. Because you can do more harm than good if you just dump all those nutrients on the tree at once. So that delayed release worked out good for us last year. And we basically just add the mulch around the tree and then put the fertilizer in a big circle. And you want to make sure to get it outside of the root system. And what that does is encourage those roots to start growing outward, which will give the tree a good base. And I'm no spider expert, but anytime you see black with red dots, you probably don't want to mess around with that guy. Fertilizing the last of the trees. I got a couple of white oaks down here in the bottom. But for all of you that tell me all the time I should plant wildflowers, you'd love it this time of year. We got a lot of good clover growing up but all of our food plots are budding right now. Pretty cool looking sight this time of year. And it's been a little while since we updated you on the 300 gallon aquarium with our pet bass we called Tiger because he was the first tiger bass we caught out of the Crimson Oak Pond. So it's time to do a little feeding. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because we got a lot of cool features coming up with our new underwater tracking system that we're going to show you in the next video. But we hope you all enjoyed this one, and we will see you all next time.